Hello, and welcome to the ArcCLS 5-Minute Workshop for Seismic Coloured Inversion. My name is Tracy Butler, and with the aid of my colleague Tony Benn, we will show you the basics of running the Petrel plug invariant. Right, over to you, Tony. Thank you, Tracy. OK, I'll show you how you can rapidly invert some reflectivity data to relative elastic attributes in a way that honours the global spectral trend. We will use some public domain penobscot data from the Scotia shelf. Our target zone here is around two seconds. To start, I'll open our seismic coloured inversion plugin, find it under processes in the geophysics drop-down. Seismic coloured inversion opens as a small window from where we can do analysis and apply our inversion operator. I'll start by performing the analysis. The input data is full stack reflectivity cube, which is used to obtain the mean seismic spectrum. On pressing the load seismic button, the software loads 40 randomly selected traces from the survey area and plots their amplitude spectrum. Using a rule of thumb, we recommend a time gate of between 500 and 1000 milliseconds long over the zone of interest to ensure a stationary wavelet. I will select a time gate of between 1600 and 2400 milliseconds over our reservoir interval. The mean seismic chart shows the mean spectrum, which is the red line. The black line is the smooth mean. The wavelet amplitude is dictated by this mean spectrum. Next, acoustic impedance logs should be selected to obtain the overall frequency trend by curve fitting. These can be time gated, the same as the seismic. The log input chart shows all of the selected logs in the time domain. Next is a chart after detrending. The individual wells chart shows each of the wells transformed to the frequency domain. Here in the global chart, the mean acoustic impedance log is used to obtain the overall frequency trend, the alpha value, by curve fitting. To show this is a, really a curve, I will change from log to linear scale. Now we can design our single convolutional operator, the blue line, by taking the difference between the average band limited impedance log, the green line, and the seismic mean, the red line. The operator is convolved with the input data to create the final output inverted cube. We can view the result of the inversion here in the seismic view window. Firstly, I will change the inversion data palette to a seismic palette. Then I'll adjust the scale to better fit our reservoir interval. The input data is on the left and the inversion is on the right. The automatic parameter selection has already done a good job. The only thing that we need to do is to adjust the high cut in the design operator dialog to bring this peak to trough range to within 15 dBs to avoid boasting the high frequencies too much. Finally, I would like to show how the inversion updates in real time as I vary the parameter settings. I will adjust the low cut to demonstrate this. That looks good now. So the operator can be saved. And the inverted cube can be created in Petrel.
and here is the final inverted outputs cube. Thanks for that, Tony. We hope you found our five-minute workshop on seismic coloured inversion useful. But if you'd like more information on this or any other of our products, then please email us at info at or check out our website. Thank you for watching.